We're sliding right into our next session. We'll be joined from Tokyo by Japan's State Minister of Finance, Kenji Nakanishi. State Minister Nakanishi's address will be on the state of the economy. Earlier today, we also had the opportunity to hear from Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Hing Sui Kiet regarding Singapore's take on a similar topic. Now we will get to hear the Japanese perspective of things. State Minister Nakanishi-san was formerly Vice President of JP Morgan Securities Japan. This presentation will also discuss the progress of fintech in Japan and how Japan can transform to become Asia's financial hub. Let's head on over to Tokyo to join State Minister Kenji Nakanishi. Today, I'm honored to have this opportunity to greet you at a gathering of influential people around the world. The subject of World FinTech Festival is Impact FinTech. This is about how to resolve social issues by providing financial services utilizing new technologies. In this speech, I would like to introduce you to social issues in Japan and the initiatives utilizing fintech to solve them. As you might know, one of the most representative and difficult issues for Japan is aging. The first case is an approach to business succession in an aging society in Japan. There are numerous small and medium enterprises in Japan that have been run by a family for generations. In these companies, high-level technologies are handed down through a long, unbroken series of inheritances. And this technological capability can be said to be the source of Japan's economic growth. Many of the businesses operated by these companies are still doing well, contributing to the growth of the Japanese economy. With the aging of society, however, there are some enterprises that have no successors and have no choice but to go out of the business. In order to respond to this issue, some online platforms for M&A matching have been created in collaboration between fintech companies and financial institutions that have access to small and medium enterprises. This platform allows both small and medium enterprises and motivated business operators to easily match online. The second point is to ensure that users continue to have access to financial services amid shrinking face-to-face -face business channels. With the population declining, the number of customers visiting financial institutions branches is also declining. Therefore, financial institutions must build a sustainable business model by using digital technologies, such as internet banking, to streamline physical sales offices. On the other hand, there are a number of people, such as the elderly and foreign workers, who require face-to-face -face financial services at the branches. In order to solve the issue of how to provide financial services to these people, a new form of financial services should be created. For example, there are financial institutions that have developed ATMs installed at convenience stores to provide a variety of services, such as account opening, eKYC, and foreign remittance services. In this way, fintech can help to solve those social issues in Japan. But it is necessary to understand that we must focus on customers' experience first, rather than mere digitalization of existing businesses. It is also expected that new financial services will contribute to solving our social issues. Since the transition to a new normal with COVID-19 is also an opportunity for such innovation, I hope that you will bring back various knowledge from this event and make use of it. Now, let me move on to another topic. I have already touched upon digitalization, which is one of the keys when considering the post-COVID society. 
Another key will be diversification of business locations. Given the rise of geopolitical, climate change, and natural disaster risks, financial institutions may need to consider having multiple business locations, not only on a global basis, but also in the Asia-Pacific region. Having multiple locations would mitigate these risks of a financial institution and help strengthen the resilience of the Asian and global financial systems at the same time. In this context, Japanese government is working hard to strengthen its international financial hub function. As you know, Japan is the world's third largest economy, accounting for about 10% of global GDP with its over 18 trillion US dollar household financial assets. These numbers clearly show enormous potential for asset management in the Japanese market. We intend to welcome star asset managers and to make the Japanese financial and capital market more sophisticated and attractive with their help by removing barriers to their entry, including the tax burden, the language barrier, and the requirement for residential status. This would be one of the key driving forces towards the revitalization of the Japanese economy. I published a proposal on this issue as well in September as chairman of the Liberal Democratic Party project team. Let me introduce four key areas of our proposal to make Japan an international financial hub. First, Elimination of entry barriers for overseas financial companies, including providing broader administrative services in English by financial services agencies of Japan, and launching an organization to handle administrative services in English and expedite procedures, both of which had been already realized or announced in early November. Second, revision of tax treatment for asset management business, such as allowing asset management corporations to deduct executive compensation and taking measures to reduce the burden of income and inheritance tax. Third, improvement of living and business environments for highly skilled foreign finance professionals. For example, relaxing the residential status requirements for accompanying domestic helpers and nannies, and expanding the scope of the credit guarantee system to cover independent asset management companies. Last but not least, effective promotion, including the launch of an English website for this purpose. I'm fully committed as a member of the government to the execution of the above mentioned key areas of our proposal. And I'm happy to announce that we'll soon be able to realize them and deliver them to you as a government policy package. Japan is a country that respects such concepts as freedom, democracy, fundamental human rights, and the rule of the law. Keeping this in mind, given the rise of geopolitical risks, I would like to vigorously promote this initiative as a member of the government and as an individual aspiring to develop the financial industry so that Japan can play a key role in the international community. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to the active and fruitful discussions today. Thank you, Japan State Minister of Finance, Kenji Nakanishi, for bringing us through his government's view of the state of the economy. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has spared no one. And in recent weeks, Japan is facing a surge in COVID-19 numbers once again. Like many countries, the Japan national government is trying to encourage more consumption for services, giving subsidy programs for dining out, as well as for domestic travel. Uh, they've also been 
Durban giving out stimulus packages for affected businesses and workers. Well, they are not alone in this, with the resurgence of COVID-19 cases in the US and Europe. Demand for Japanese exports could be hit in the coming months as well. So definitely some trying times ahead. But against the backdrop of a raging and persistent pandemic, the world economy is projected to shrink. Uncertainties persist about the future course of the pandemic and its economic and social consequences. So torn between saving lives and saving the economy, some governments are already beginning to cautiously lift restrictions with a view to jumpstart their economies. Well, here's a quote from Elliot Harris, the UN Chief Economist and Assistant Secgen for Economic Development. Now, he says the pace and the strength of the recovery from the crisis not only hinges on the efficacy of public health measures in slowing the spread of the virus, but also on the ability of countries to protect jobs and incomes, particularly of the most vulnerable members of our society. So really something to think about when you're talking about staying resilient in this post-pandemic crisis. I think we, we are just getting started with the fintech revolution. 